my name is Linda. I grew up in a small town in Illinois and always dreamed of being a flight attendant. But life got in the way. I went to work for an insurance company and 26 years later, I took a buyout. Um, 2001, my husband passed away and all of a sudden the house was three times its size. My friends were all working. I um, found myself with too much time on my hands. So we had talked about me applying for a job as a flight attendant. And my husband had said, you know, he would move with me if I would be based somewhere. But I had loved our life and never got around to it. So I decided now was the time. I was thrilled when I got my dream job. I went to Dallas and went through the training and graduated September 7th, 2001 and was based in New York. So I went to New York directly from Dallas. We had um, one day of training to go through after we got there. And then I needed to find an apartment or crash pad, the airline industry calls them, which I did find. I was able to do a little sightseeing. I took the Staten Island Ferry, um, to, took wonderful pictures of the Twin Towers on my, my way back to Manhattan. Um, I don't recall doing much else that weekend. I did meet a crew member for lunch. I was staying in an American Crew Hotel and on September 11th was my day to move out. I had gotten up early that day taken the shuttle to LaGuardia Airport intending to manage my schedule for the month. I um, traded trips and picked up trips and decided what position I would be working and did all the things you do as a flight attendant and then walked back and it was about 6.30 in the morning and I remember thinking, wow, here's this small town Illinois girl in the big city of New York it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, the birds were chirping. There was that just hint of fall in the air. And I remember thinking how I love New York. I got back to the hotel shortly before seven, thought well, it's too early to move to a crash pad. So I laid down on the bed, turned on Good Morning America. Like much of the rest of the country, I saw saw it all unfold as the planes hit the Twin Towers. After the second plane hit, I called my children. Um, one lives in Illinois, one was living in Arizona at the time. Woke them both up and told them to turn on their TV. It was horrifying, as I'm sure you all know. Um, my cell phone would work at times and it wouldn't work. I thought, well, I'll go downstairs and, and uh, go outside and see if I can get a better signal. So I went downstairs and the lobby and bar was full of people all gathered around the TV. Some people crying, some people in shock, but quiet as a mouse. Two pilots came through the door physically carrying a sobbing flight attendant and they had commented that she had seen the second plane hit and how do you process that? I ended up going out into the parking lot intending to use the phone and there in the sky, I could see the black smoke billowing into the air and knew what it was. Um, again, the phone would work sporadically. I um, needed to move out and uh, was going to arrange for a cab or some way to get to my apartment. I had been told that the rental cars were gone by 11 o'clock that morning, that people that could either rented a car to drive to their destination or to get out of the city. With the help of the hotel, I finally got a cab four o'clock that afternoon and went to my crash pad. I had met four of my six roommates. Uh, when I got there, only one was there. 
the rest had either left the city or they were stranded on an overnight. Um, Joni introduced herself, said welcome to the apartment, and that she was going to be staying with her boyfriend. So there I sat, this small town girl, in an apartment in New York City all by myself. Um, it was tough. I turned on TV and as you probably remember, all that was on was the towers and the recap and I cried for days. My family would call, I'd put on a smile for them and wonder what in the world have I gotten myself into. After um, a few days, I decided I can't do this anymore. And I thought I need to go somewhere. So my grandparents are immigrants. I wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. So I called and um, the recording said it was open. What hours? Um, keep in mind, I had no idea in New York what was close, what was where, um, how far the city blocks were. Um, so I got my maps out, found what bus I needed to take to the subway so that I could go, and started off. Um, I come to realize I've never seen crowds in New York City like on TV because the bus had a handful of people. The subway had even fewer. Uh, and on the journey on the subway, um, it started to slow down. And I thought, you know, what's up with that? But it slowed to a crawl. I mean, you could have gotten out and run faster. And then stopped in front of this Wall Street stop that had crime scene tape all over. That was my first indication that I must have been close to the Twin Towers. The doors opened and closed. Of course, nobody got on and no one got off. And at that point, I don't recall if there were other people on the train or not. But as it crept away, I could smell an electrical smell. And having just gotten out of training, all I could think of is how do I evacuate this train? Um, if I need to, what other exits are there than the doors? Um, all those things going through my mind. A few stops later was a Statue of Liberty stop. So I got off, went above ground, and was shocked to see the debris in the air. It was a cloudy day with everything floating in the air still. And this is three days later. The National Guard was everywhere in gas masks, machine guns. A few residents I saw had masks on as well and that deer in a headlight look in their face like was probably on mine. Um, the Statue of Liberty wasn't open. So I turned around, got back on the subway and uh, went north to Central Park. Got off the train at Central Park and um, was shocked that it was a sunny day. Sat down on the first bench I could find and cried. Um, I, tr I went through the Guggenheim, to be honest, I don't remember a thing. Um, and then went back to my apartment. I started flying then the 18th of September, I think it was. My first flight was LaGuardia to LAX. I was on a wide body, which is two aisles, so it was a huge plane. We had six people on board. Um, it was very eerie that there were only six people on board. There's more flight attendants than, and flight crew than there were passengers. We had one man who was a very nice man, dressed in white, with white head covering, um, that after the seatbelt sign went off, knelt at the bulkhead and prayed. Um, it was a little, a little shocking, but it made me realize that 
you know, we're all in this together. Everybody has their way of coping. And, you know, we all have to do what we have to do. I did three of those trips, um, New York to LAX and back. And I love the job. I love the people I work with. American was a great company to work for. The rumors were flying that there would be massive layoffs. And at the end of September, I got my letter saying that I would no longer be needed and was furloughed effective September 30th. On my last flight with them, they provided me with a flight from LaGuardia to Chicago O'Hare. Um, I realized how tense it was getting through security as I was now in street clothes. And even as a flight attendant, TSA had taken my eyelash curlers, my nail clippers, um, and I felt bad for them. You know, at that point, they were just as nervous and scared as the rest of us were. It was during, in line with the TSA, that two pilots um, came to the head of the line to get through security. And the lady behind me started harassing them. What are they doing jumping in line? They shouldn't be allowed to go first. She had been waiting in line a long time. And I thought, my gosh, lady, I turned to her and I said, where do you think you're going to go without these guys? And she, oh, oh, okay, I guess you're right. <laughs> we then talked and she calmed down and realized what a silly thing it was to say. Um, I went on, got on my flight to Chicago. The plane did one of these side to side turbulence and everyone around me screamed. The lady next to me crossed herself, started praying, grabbed my hand and I looked out the window and saw the water and I thought, I remember thinking specifically, uh, was the plane was going to go down and this is how I was going to die. Fortunately, <laughs> the pilot came on and explained that we were behind another plane. That's what created the turbulence. We landed safely and um, it was uneventful from then on. And was thrilled to be back in the dream job that I had learned to love. It's been a great experience. I, um, it has been tough to talk about this. It sort of surprised me how tough it was um, with my husband's death and then September 11th, it, um, those memories are hard. I think it'll all be, always be with all of us.